Do you think about cycling as a climb? Not like an ascent on a tough bike race, more like a metaphorical climb, like moving up a pyramid. Like the kind of climb you achieve through self-sacrifice, commitment, and excellence. And when you reach the top of that pyramid, cycling perfection. And this isn't just for road cyclists. There's a mountain bike pyramid, or maybe even multiple mountain bike pyramids. There's a triathlon pyramid, and maybe even now a gravel bike pyramid. But these aren't only pyramids of achievement. This isn't about sports. It's also about culture. I got this idea of a pyramid from this new book, Live to Ride by Peter Flax. He's been writing about bikes for a long time. He's written for numerous magazines and publications, and this was his pyramid. 10 or 15 years ago, I was uh, a fitness cycling enthusiast. I, I raced. I was the editor-in-chief of the largest bike magazine in the U U.S. Um, and, and so my identity was really wrapped around like going out and training and, and, um, and spending time with other people who were riding in the same, same way. And, you know, I, I used to feel like there was a pyramid and, 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 and that like getting spending your life caring about bikes was like peeling back these layers of an onion of like you know you were out to become like a black belt rider somehow but this isn't just about athletics to ascend to the top of the pyramid you often have to adapt the culture and language of the sport you have to wear the right clothes use the right gear say the right words and let me tell you there's a kind of joy in ascending this pyramid i mean i've never made it anywhere close to a pyramid like this but i've been on the pyramid and being part of that can feel amazing. It gives you a challenge. It gives you fitness and adventure. It can create a sense of community and you can find a lot of friendship and joy being part of this. And as you get closer to the top of this pyramid, you start to take pride in it. It can even become part of your identity. And maybe you start to think that your pyramid is the best. And maybe you even start to look down on the people at the bottom of the pyramid as you ascend to the top. You know, maybe that person at the bottom is using the wrong kind of bike, or maybe their socks are the wrong length, or maybe they talk about it in the wrong way. And what about those other periods? Obviously they're inferior. I mean, what are they even thinking? Are they even cyclists? And maybe this leads to you building up walls around your pyramid to keep you in, but also yes, to maybe keep other people out as well. And Peter says he saw this, especially as he got closer to the top. And working at all those bike magazines, looking back now, he thinks that, yeah, maybe he was even part of building up those walls. I greenlit a book when I was at Bicycling that was just like a celebration of bike tribes. And it's, you know, just always been this thing where, um, you, you know, there's like a little um, like kernel of, of like separatism and elitism within bike culture where people are always thinking that like whatever group that they're in has some kind of primacy, particularly in the sort of higher end roadie category. I think people have like long felt comfortable, like, oh, I can make fun of triathletes or, or I can make fun of people who have little mirrors on their helmets or people who, um, you know, ride, um, you know, drive to a trailhead with um, fancy mountain bikes on their SUV. Um, and, and that kind of like this way of othering um, people who ride that are different than them has been accepted for a, a long time. But then something happened and his life changed. Peter got a new job that was not in cycling and it was a big upheaval. He moved to a new city and he sort of fell off that pyramid. Not working in the bike industry was a huge change in his life. So in order to keep his foot in cycling, he started commuting by bike. Felt a little weird at first. He was no longer trying to ascend that pyramid and it felt strange. It wasn't better or worse, it was just different. And what happened was his pyramid was gone. Yeah, I mean, I've, there have been so many transitions along the way, but um, it was probably the first time where my central riding identity was as a utility rider, where um, even though I was riding the same kind of mileage I had for, you know, the past 15 or 20 years, that it was all revolving suddenly around getting from my house to my place of work and, um, and riding in a complicated and exciting and weird urban environment and, um, and, and, and so it did change my orientation quite a bit. I totally understand this feeling. I remember once after years of bike commuting as fast and as speedily as I could, I found myself for some reason, I can't remember why, on a bike that was not fast and it was not sleek and it was a little more upright and a lot slower. And it felt strange, it felt alien. But in a weird way, 
I also found that a little freeing because I was off that pyramid. <laughs> and this new reality that Peter faced opened up his eyes to something else. Being off that pyramid, he found kind of liberating. The walls had come down and he found himself free to explore and explore he did. He explored his own riding. He started looking at the ways other people rode. He looked at other ways of cycling. And what he found was that no matter what cycling pyramid you're on, no matter what kind of bike you're riding, no matter what you're wearing, we all tend to ride for the same reasons. It didn't come quick, quickly for, for me, but um, I have to say when I ride now and I see people on say the local bike paths along the beach here in LA that when I see people who are radically different than me, you know, people who are on these recumbent bat bikes flying little flags and people that are, are, are unhoused on really beat up bikes riding really slow, um, just like all manner of bikes, I do feel like a kinship to them all. And that, and like, when you, and, and that there's something really liberating and wonderful when you um, realize that everyone who rides um, is on your team. One of the things that Peter saw when he got off that pyramid was the joy that so many of us experience, no matter how we're riding, no matter what kind of cyclist we are. There are those who ride for adventure, for a connection to nature, for self-expression, for utility, and yes, even for speed. And in each of those ways, he realized the joy, the feelings, they're pretty similar. And there's some strength in that. One of the things that Peter told me is he thinks that the splintering of cycling has held back the larger cause of cycling in society. I've seen this over the years as we've tried to get more and more people riding their bikes in cities. Often people who identify as like a road cyclist or a mountain biker, they never saw themselves as a city cyclist. And so they never considered the bike as transportation. For them, it was sport. We're all bike riders and most of us love it for the same reasons. And if we start to break down those invisible walls, if we start to get rid of those made up pyramids, we are stronger as a community together. This is from Peter's book. People who ride know that the bicycle is one of the greatest inventions in human history. It's a machine that can transport you, whether toward the fulfillment of a physical goal or to a geographic destination or to an existential journey. And we are on the cusp of having our broader culture accept how bicycles can change the world for the better. Now is not the time to isolate ourselves in smaller communities that sanctify our differences. Now is the time to stand together and share the profound strengths of our common ground. I am a bike rider. If you're nodding your head right now, I'm certain you are a bike rider too.